Hey folks, Internet Dude here. Hey, so the day after I shot that video where I gave you an intro to this 2007 town car, I had a problem and most noticeably the, the remote stopped working for locking and unlocking the doors and popping the trunk. And you saw in my video, I used that remote to pop the trunk. So what I did was I was trying to figure out, okay, well, what works, what doesn't work? And I got this little list and I wrote down, oh, you know, this works, this doesn't work. But at the end of the day here, um, the issue was uh, the power door locks didn't work. Um, the memory seat didn't work. The dome light didn't work when you open the door. Uh, the trunk door button didn't work. The power mirrors didn't work. The keypad on the outside didn't work. Uh, and then um, when you put the car in drive, it doesn't lock the doors. So I made this list of what works and what doesn't work, and that's a good step to do when you're troubleshooting. Uh, the next thing I did was I got it from the owner's manual. I was like, okay, what fuses have to do with this system? I checked all the fuses. All the fuses were fine. And I'm like, okay, well, I don't know what the problem is here. The fuses are good. And so then next I checked the wires in the driver's door because sometimes those wires can get broken or um, cracked and my wires were fine. So I now know the wiring is good. There's power there. Uh, what else could be the problem? So that led me to do some searching on the internet because I'm new to these Panther cars. Uh, this one being a town car, the Mercury Grand Marquis and the Ford Crown Victoria are also considered Panther cars. They're on the same platform. And what I found is some other people were having similar issues with a bunch of electrical quirks, let's call it. And the problem actually traces back to this module that's in the door, in the driver's door. Uh, it has a connector here, connector here, and a connector here, and that depends on your year. But if we look at it, it's actually labeled driver door module. Well, <laughs> so what I did is uh, I took off the door panel and I took out the module. And when you take out the module, this is what you get inside of there. You, I kind of opened it up because I was looking to see if there's any problems with the um, circuit board and I couldn't visually see any issues with the circuit board but that's not you know a visual inspection is just part of the part of the thing here. So I kind of looked into it and you know I guess if you think about it you have a module that controls power door locks, the power trunk release, the key fob, it does a lot of things and this thing is residing in the driver's door that gets open and closed a lot. So I understand why they probably put it there, you know, you can shorten wires and stuff, but that's not the best location. Anyway, so what I did is when I went online and it turns out that what you can do is simply buy a new module. Now you can't buy the exact module um, like new. What you have to do is buy the current uh, part number like you can't just buy that part number now you buy this part and you have the dealer program it now the cost for this is $530 Canadian approximate just for the replacement module and then there's of course the labor programming time to uh, program the module so what I found out online is that if you find a car with the same configuration and you swap it it's probably going to work it, you know, provided that replacement part uh, from the used car is, uh, is working. So what I did is I did some research and I tried to figure out, okay, well, my car is a signature limited model and I looked in the uh, a PDF of the brochure for that year. I'm like, okay, well, what options the signature limited has that, uh, you know, correlate to this issue I'm having? Like, and so I'm like, okay, full power trunk lid, I have that, you know, mirrors with the memory setting, um, easy entrance, exit, power driver seat with memory and stuff. So what I determined is I should get a replacement part from a signature limited or higher. So we have the designer here and I'll probably be fine. But if I go from the base signature trim level, it may not work. So then I set out to find the correct replacement part and I went to carpart.com with a hyphen. I'm not affiliated, this is not sponsored. So I searched on there and I found the same trim level of car, Signature Limited, um, same year. 
And so I purchased that module, and that's what I have here. This is the replacement module. But it took some time to get here. See, it says town car, left front door. That's probably stock number or something. So this one's actually the replacement part. This is a used part. I don't know if it's any good right now. We're going to find out. The other one that I've already opened up here, this is the original out of the car. The one more part to this story is that in the car right now, I have a driver's door module or DDM from a 2006 signature level town car because in the meantime, while I was waiting for that new part, the new used part to arrive, uh, I went to the nearest junkyard and they had um, the one year off signature car. So I thought, well, I'll throw it in. We'll see what happens. So I actually already did that. I took the door panel off. I replaced that module uh, and plugged it in. And sure enough, some of the features worked for me and some didn't. So anything to do with the the power, um, the memory settings. So the mirrors um, won't work and something to do with the seat. Yeah, the seat won't work either, but the trunk will pop now. The lights will illuminate when the door is opened and the power locks work. So I'm just, I'll just show you real quick kind of how to get at this module now and I'll replace it with that one that I hope is working and good because this part from the junkyard, uh, it cost me about $110 with shipping and tax. And, uh, you know, I was looking at probably at least $600 to just go into the dealer and say, hey, I need this replaced. So I'm kind of rolling the dice right now, but uh, I figure it's, it's worth a shot. Step one, disconnect the battery. Step two, pop off the different trim pieces. There's one that's kind of hard to get to right back here. And you might wind up breaking. It's kind of hard to see, but we just kind of flip that one down. And then we get up here. I like to start at the top on these little trim pieces. Whoop. Ooh, that's not good. Okay. And then get behind this one. There you go. Those just have little tabs on them. There's just two Phillips screws on this handle. The longer one goes towards the back of the door. One Torx T30 bolt back here. And there are three screws on the bottom of the door panel. One up here, one right here, one back here. Just to remove those. Okay, and then just pull at the front edge on the door panel. It's gonna sound like it's breaking, but that dislodges the clips. So as you can see, I didn't have to do anything with the power window switches or anything. And that actually lets the uh, door panel stay in place while I disconnect the electrical. So to get that off, there's just a little tab on this one. And then it pulls out and this one, there's a little tab. Wiggle it out of the way. And then this one, I have another one here to show you but there's a little tab to push right there. And then this gray lever flips over, so. Like that, and that pushes the connector down. There's one screw here to remove. And there's one tab down here, and one tab on this side. Where's that one? There. 
and then this piece comes off. All right, so here's all three DDM or driver door modules that I wound up with. The original that's failed. The replacement from the local junkyard that was a different trim level. And then the one I got from the uh, far away junkyard. And if you actually look at the part numbers, 6W1T, 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 13C791BB, 13C791BB. So what you'll note from this is even though the part number is the same, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work. You need to match up the features from the donor car to your car. Feature set doesn't match on a signature with signature limited, and this was signature limited. So I have my fingers crossed that I'm going to plug this in and everything will work great. So I'm not going to show you, but I'll put it back in with those clips, one screw, the electrical connectors, and we'll come back and see if uh, this was a win. All right, so I set the door panel in place. I didn't push it all the way on, but basically you line it up. There's a couple of pins and you push it and that snaps the clips on. But I just put this one fastener in down here just to hold it temporarily till we know that it's good and working. But we can see the uh, interior illumination is working with the door open. I'm just going to turn the key on. Let's see if the door locks work. Door locks work, that's good. Let's see if the power mirror works. Oh, that's good. Power mirror works. See if the seat memory works. That illuminated, so that tells me that it's working. So seat memory is good, power mirrors are good, door locks are good, illuminate, illuminated entry is good. Let's try the power trunk. Power trunk works. And to close it. So the only other couple things to check is whether or not the exterior keypad works. But I don't know that I have the code for that yet. I'll come back to that. And then the other thing is with the key fobs. Let me get that. <clears throat> so the fob shouldn't work right now. Because the key fob actually gets programmed to the DDM. So what I'm going to have to do Real easy trick. You put the ignition key in, you turn it on and off. And on the eighth time you turn it on, you got to do that within 10 seconds. And you leave it on and then the door locks will activate. And then you hit one button on this remote and then the locks will um, indicate. They'll go up and down to indicate that was programmed. And then within a few seconds you can press if you have another remote and that programs the remotes to the DDM. Just a note that DDM is not, uh, there's no VIN associated with that uh, DDM, uh, which is kind of a nice thing. But if you take it to the dealer, it's going to be a really expensive repair. So I would recommend you try this route first. Okay, folks. Well, there you have it. I went and programmed the key so it works to lock and unlock. I actually have two fobs, so I programmed them. I verified. Um, the other features and the only thing I'm missing is the code for the keypad on the door uh, You know, that's the thing when you buy it from a junkyard or from another source and They don't have that code. Well, you don't have that code that code can be found if you have a program called Forescan, Or you can take it to the dealer and they can hook up their computer and read the code from that module as well so I hope this video has helped you if you're having random electrical problems and it can possibly be traced back to that driver's door module. Don't just go based on that uh, part number. You need to really match up based on the features and it a little bit depends on the year of your car as well. Uh, there's a helpful link at a forum. Uh, I think it's lincolnsonline.com. I will put it in the description. That uh, thread has some good part numbers and information if you're having a similar problem. So check that out. Anyway, if you found the video helpful, give it a thumbs up and click that subscribe. I'll probably have a few more town car videos in the future. I don't really have anything planned at this time, but I had this unplanned issue and I found a fix and I just wanted to share that with you. So thanks for watching.